Welcome back, Holo Table Heroes, to another Galaxy of Heroes video featuring your boy Scribble and his shiny bald head. It is a bald head full of knowledge, deep, deep, dark knowledge that only the Sith know. And today we're going to talk a little bit about that knowledge and what you need to be doing if you have got any interest whatsoever in jumping on this Leviathan farm as soon as possible. This is so important for everybody to get doing and do it immediately. OK, trust me on this. Let's break this down. Okay, guys, as we are all very much well aware, the TIE Dagger has recently been announced as the very first galactic chase that we are going to be getting. We know that this is going to be a seven star requirement for the brand new fleet meta that is coming very, very shortly under the Leviathan. Now, the Leviathan is going to be piloted by Darth Revan. Um, we know that the Fury Class Interceptor, which is the current Conquest unit, the current reward for our uh, last version of Conquest, this version and one more version of Conquest is also a seven star requirement for the Leviathan. We have these confirmed, CG has said it, inside of their own posts. Uh, so here we go. Is this ship required for the Leviathan? Yes, it will be required at seven star to unlock. What are the other requirements? TBC, soon, TM, all that business. So with that in mind, we know that this Leviathan ship, this particular requirement here, the TIE Dagger, looks like a pretty awesome ship. Looks like it's got a lot of damage output. It is coming as a galactic chase this week. Those of you that do not know what galactic chases are, they are temporary events, a little bit different to a marquee. These events just come around and they might be around for a couple of days or a weekend where you can go ahead and earn bonus shards off a particular node. The TIE Dagger, I believe, is going to be on a fleet node. Uh, yeah, TIE Dagger bonus drops on fleet node starting this week. So we can assume it's either going to drop tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, or even today. It might start this evening, depending on where you are in the world. It is going to be available through Fleet Energy, guys, as a bonus drop. Now, the last ship that we had as a galactic chase was the incredible TIE Defender. The TIE Defender is a phenomenal ship. It was, it absolutely claps, it carries fleet victories with undermanned fleets against the current uh, meta fleets of both Profundity and the Executor. It is a dominant ship. Now, when this ship was in, where is it? Come on, TIE Defender. Look at that beautiful, beautiful ship. When this ship came as a galactic chase, it was so free to play farmable. Okay, you needed about 5,000 crystals, which I know, depending on where you are in the game, you might not have a stockpile of 5,000 crystals, but that was the easiest galactic chase we ever had, and we got a phenomenal ship out of it. Now, we know we're getting this new TIE Dagger as a um, galactic chase in the same manner, going to the same nodes that the TIE Defender was. We need about 5,000 energy in order to unlock it at seven star before the end of the event. If this has the same drop rates, prepare for it, guys. You need to be refreshing your ship energy, maxing out your ship energy before this drop goes live. I'm not spending, well, I spent three sims worth of ship energy today to get my daily objectives done, but I am going to be maxing out the maximum amount of energy that I can for my Sith ships, uh, my, my fleet energy. Once the drop goes live, you are going to be wanting to refresh all the way through your 200s. I know that sounds expensive, doing all the 50s, doing all the 100s, and one or two of the 200 drops with this preloaded ship energy, provided the drop rates are the same as the TIE Defender, you will get a seven star unlock for the, the Sith Troopers TIE Dagger before the end of the event. It will give you a massive head start. Currently, we do not have enough information about when or how quickly the Leviathan is coming to the holo tables. We know for certain that this ship is going to be a seven star requirement. We know that the Fury class interceptor is going to be a seven star requirement. And we know that there's going to be one other Sith ship yet to be announced, most likely as another galactic chase as a seven star requirement. The earliest that you'll be able to get the Fury Class Interceptor is not for another month. We've got another week or five days so of this version of Conquest, which means add another month on top of that. That is the earliest five days and seven hours we've got left of Conquest as the recording of this video. We have got essentially another month after this, the, the end of this Conquest for the Fury Class Interceptor to have the first unlocks. If CG are going to push heavily on the Leviathan, that is the earliest that the Leviathan will drop. Okay, I know it's unlikely because we still need another marquee event and usually CG lets the ships become farmable before they release the brand new ship. 
However, I have to pr I have to prophesize and I have to say you are better off getting ahead of this than waiting to find out. Try to save your crystals. Try to max out enough of your fleet energy. I think the cap is around about 1,000 or 1,200. In the next couple of days, do your three refreshes. Get up there, do three refreshes tomorrow. And then once that sit, um, ship becomes farmable as a galactic chase, you are going to refreshing the heck out of your fleet energy to try and maximize getting that seven star drop in the given period. Okay. I would rather err on the side of caution here and make sure that everybody at home is in a position where they can say, okay, I've got the tie dagger. I'm already red boxing. If you're not already, watch my guides on this conquest. It's very easy to red box this. I'm done. I'm farming. Um, I'm farming my my datacron materials now. Sure, I've got a couple of global feats. I've got a couple of night sister feats and these two feats to get done, but I can do that as I'm farming uh, bonus nodes. So I'm definitely getting my red box over here to get the Fury class interceptor. So once you are, um, if, if you are able to max out that fleet energy, okay? Max out your refreshes once the TIE Defender drops. Get your red box over here so that you can get the TIE Defender. And then when we get the next galactic chase, we're going to have to be doing this all over again, baby. Yeah, we're going to be doing this all over again. Once the actual Leviathan comes into the game, it's going to be expensive to max that out in terms of crystals. If they use the exact same model that they have been using for previous um, uh, fleet mastery events like the Executor and like the Profundity, we know that it's going to require just under 26,000 crystals to refresh it from four star to seven star in day one. That's a lot of crystals and I don't have those crystals, especially when we're looking at double galactic chase marquees, essentially, where we're going to have to spend roughly about 10,000 crystals to get those and then an extra 25,000 crystals to max out the Leviathan fleet. And that's without us even knowing what the relic requirements are for the Leviathan. We can make a couple of, of assumptions around what the uh, relic requirements are going to be, just based on the fact that this is a Sith ship. We know that Darth uh, Revan is going to be piloting the capital ship, okay? So Darth Revan, as the pilot for this capital ship, means most likely, I, I'm not saying, guys, go out here and relic nine your Darth Revan. I'm not saying that. There's no point in investing your relic data now. You get nothing for that. Darth Revan being at Relic 9 will do exactly the same things as Darth Revan does at Relic 5. Don't waste your, your relic materials yet. I know that it's most likely going to be an R9 Darth Revan. We look at the Profundity, the capital ship pilot there is going to be is, is Adrad. Adrad is an R9 requirement. The new requirements for the Leviathan are going to be higher, not lower, than the Profundity. OK, so I'm not saying invest your relics yet. Let's wait for the imminent announcement that CG is going to be pushing out around what our requirements are. We can make assumptions. Darth Revan is probably going to be one. We know that Malgus is required as part of the Fury, uh, in, uh, the Fury class interceptor that we're getting in this conquest. We can assume that a high relic Malgus, most likely relic eight, is going to be required. Malak does not have a ship. Dark Basti doesn't have a ship. Sith Marauder does, so we can assume that he's going to be a high relic requirement. But if you've got C, then you've already got him at relic seven. We can assume it's going to push it further. Sith Assassin absolutely is going to be a requirement. Sith Assassin has a Sith ship that gets used nowhere in the meta. And we are aware that it is going to be required for the Leviathan. So this is absolutely going to be a requirement. She's probably going to be a high relic requirement because nobody gears Sith Assassin. Nobody even uses her. She is left to languish in pits of despair, unfortunately. Sith Empire Trooper HK-47. These guys don't have ships, but they are part of the Sith faction, part of the Sith Empire faction. Well, HK isn't a Sith, part of the Sith Empire faction. So they may well get a Marquis or a Galactic Chase ship. We could get a Dark Side Ebon Hawk that perhaps uses Bastila Shan, perhaps uses HK. You never know. Um, we could get some other generic ship from the Kotal universe to round out the last marquee and it could go over to Sith Empire Trooper. We could also potentially be looking at characters that are Sith but are not Sith Empire. We've already seen it's happened. We've got it with uh, Sith Trooper over here who I had at gear one earlier today and I immediately took him to Relic 1 because we know we're getting his marquee immediately. Darth Talon can potentially get a ship. Darth Nihilus, Darth Sion, I mean... I don't think so, but you never know. Darth Maul already has a Sith ship, so potentially he could be a requirement. But other than that, guys, 
I'm not even sure where they might push with this. So don't invest your resources just yet. I would recommend you get yourself ahead of the curve when it comes to these brand new galactic chases that are coming out and make sure that you try to save up enough crystals. I know that's a bit of an oxymoron when we're talking about spend 5,000 on this marquee, preload your energy, but also save crystals. I know it's hard, but just prepare. If you want to be on top of the fleet meta and keep your crystal payouts from getting first in fleet arena, you need to be preparing for the Leviathan. It's going to make massive changes to TB. It's going to make massive changes to your GAC and territory wars. Count on it count on it. All right, that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Thank you for joining me today. Let me know in the comment section down below, who do you think is going to be the next galactic chase? What are you doing to take advantage of our current knowledge? And have you got your crystal stash saved up? I don't. I don't. It's going to be a tough time for Scribble, but we're going to try our best to make things work. Thank you all so very much for joining me today, ladies and gentlemen beans of the tribe. And until the next video, peace out and may the force be with you.